Good morning, it's day three of our big loop trip and we are going to go from Oklahoma City to Santa Fe, New Mexico today and it's going to be one of our longest legs. Let's take a look at the path that we are planning on taking for this day. Alright, so it says that we need to go from Oklahoma City all the way west and up to Santa Fe and it's saying that we're going to have to make three stops, one in uh, Shamrock and Amarillo, Texas and Santa Rosa, New Mexico to get to our final destination. And But it's only saying that we're going to have to get to Shamrock with 16% and given the headwinds and all of the uh, low efficiency I had yesterday, that may be cutting it too close. So actually there is another supercharger right here in Weatherford that I think we're going to go to and then give us a little more buffer uh, if we need to. So going there, it's going to take, let's see what it says, 59 minutes, 62 miles. Should get there with 55%, which is plenty, but uh, it'll allow us to gauge whether or not we can make it to Shamrock or if we need to stop. So that's going to be our path and let's go ahead and pack up and hit the road. We are in Weatherford, Oklahoma, 68 miles west of Oklahoma City, and that last run had an average consumption of 418 kilowatt or watt hours per mile. It was brutal. Hey everyone, we're in Weatherford, Oklahoma. There's a convenience stop nearby, wide open superchargers. The last run from Oklahoma City, I saw a consumption of over 400 watts per hour, uh, watt hours per mile of driving. And I've noticed that the estimation of when or what my state of charge is gonna be when I get to my destination has been off. And I don't know if it's because we're going up at elevation from Oklahoma City to Santa Fe, we're gonna be going up over a mile of elevation, which is probably part of it. We're also driving at fairly high speeds down here in the south. I'm driving at the speed limit, which is 75. But I'm finding that for about every hour of driving, the estimation that the car is telling me as far as arriving to our destination is off by about 5%. So I'm gonna factor that in in our charging here uh, to make sure that I wanna to get to my destination with about 10 to 15%. But then if it's right now, Shamrock is the next stop and it says it's about uh, one and a half hours. So I'm going to say we're going to lose probably seven to eight percent off of that estimation. So I'm going to want to charge up till it t says I need to get there 20, 25 percent, probably 25 percent, and then we'll go from there. All right, it says we can get to Shamrock with 31 percent of charge, which should be plenty. We were doing some other things here before we decided to head out. So I'm going to get unplugged and we'll get on our way. Last session cost us $4.46 for 68 miles of range.
landed in Shamrock, Texas, almost 100 miles, 383 watts per mile, a little bit better than last time. Let's get plugged in. Well, we're in Shamrock, Texas. And there isn't much here. Um, this is actually the first leg that my wife uh, drove the Tesla in any amount of time. And the verdict after driving for about an hour and a half is that she hated it. I uh, thought that the autopilot was just not fitting her style and also that the bag uh, was difficult for her to stay on top of um, because she was gripping it hard and just didn't have the finesse of the wheel. Um, and, and about halfway through the drive, she got the Tesla timeout. So uh, she had to drive manually for the rest of the drive and she got done and said, I'm glad I don't have a Tesla. Anyway, I like my Tesla and uh, I'll be taking the next few legs uh, from here. But uh, we're gonna be charging up and uh, next stop is going to be a mall in Amarillo, Texas, which is about an hour and 45 minutes from now. So we'll be charging here for probably another, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes. All right, we're all charged up, had some lunch. Six dollars and five cents. Let's hit the road. at Amarillo, Texas. We, in the last leg, 102 miles, 395 watts hours per mile. Um, decided to do most of that journey five mile under the speed limit of 70. Actually made a huge difference dropping us down from an average of about 450 to the, the 395 or below. So significant improvement, lots of wind. All right, so we landed in Amarillo, Texas. Uh, decided to take this journey a little bit slower. It's super, super windy down here in Texas right now. And at 75 miles an hour, which is the speed limit, we were averaging at, uh, at those speeds about 450 uh, watt hours per mile, which is pretty high. And it was cutting down on a range quite a bit. Decided to dial it back to 70. And that actually made a significant difference, getting us from about 450 down to about about 380, 390, which is still high, but uh, it's uh, a lot better. Um, so far, the trip, uh, just a, an update on the big loop. We are almost a thousand miles in, 956.6 miles, average 350 watt hours per mile, which is not great. Um, we are going up in elevation, which I think has an impact on things. Um, but I also have two other people in the car and a whole bunch of luggage, and I think the extra weight is also uh, dragging us down. So we're just kind of going stop by stop and making sure we have enough reserve uh, over above what the car thinks we need in order to get to our next stop because we're, we're seeing about a 5% per hour drop or a variance in, in the amount of uh, estimate to arrival. So we wanna make sure that we got plenty of buffer in order to get there. I'm sitting here at the, uh, at the supercharger um, for once, this is actually a full supercharger. The first time I've really seen hardly anybody on this whole trip, which is kind of cool actually. But uh, I was lucky to get the last slot, but unfortunately we we're charging quite a bit slower, 67 kilowatts or 281 miles uh, per hour. So I'm gonna be here a little while, but that's okay because my wife and my daughter are across the road at the mall um, doing some shopping. And uh, so I'm just gonna kind of chill out here for a while and uh, soak it all in. All right, I've been sitting here for a little bit and um, the spot next to me just opened up, but uh, I'm still sharing a spot. So I'm gonna unplug and I'm gonna slide over one slot so I can maybe get some more, uh, 
Let's get some faster supercharging. Also good note in Amarillo, Texas, supercharger is free. For some people it may not be um, that obvious that uh, superchargers actually share power between every two superchargers. And on each supercharger is a number or a number and a letter. Let me flip this around. You can see here on this supercharger, it says 2A. There's also going to be a 2B. And it's best to try to get on one number all by yourself because then you're getting all of the power. And let me show you what the difference was. I was getting, when I was sharing next to this Model 3 next to me, about, about 65 kilowatts per hour. And now I'm getting about 107 kilowatts per hour. So it's a big difference. So just me unplugging and plugging back in one slot over is giving me much faster charge rate. And also can't beat the price. So I'm sitting here at the supercharger in Amarillo, Texas, and I just thought I'd reflect over the last couple of days that we have been on the road and some things that uh, I've noticed that I've only noticed while driving. So it would have been nice, it would be really nice if Tesla offered right on the navigation maps weather radar um, and specifically wind uh, I've been in encountering a ton of wind down here in Texas, and it would be kind of nice uh, knowing just how much wind is. It'd be helpful in the planning and also for avoiding storms. Um, I've noticed that when I am running on autopilot, I don't notice the wind that much in this car, so it's really kind of get a difficult to gauge whether it's being jerked around or not. Um, and other than there's not a lot of trees down here in Texas to observe just where the wind is blowing. So uh, having wind on the nav screen would be fantastic. Okay, we're charged up to 77%. Um, wife and daughter are done shopping at the mall. So I'm looking to try to get out of here as quickly as possible. Was hoping to make it to the uh, Santa Rosa supercharger, um, which it says is... Um, 155 miles away but given the headwind that we have here which is brutal and my efficiency being down the way that it was um, we are uh, going to actually stop at this supercharger here at uh, Tucumcari hope I pronounced that right in New Mexico and it says that we will get there with 33% uh, which is plenty and I'm just gonna wait until I charge up to 80% here and unplug because Supercharging is free here. So We're just gonna wait here another couple minutes and then we'll be on our way We arrived at Tucumuchi. That's not how you say it, but I don't know how you say it. With uh, 108 miles, 407 watt hours per mile, wind was really bad. Kept it under five under the speed limit. So apparently this town is called Tucumcari. And for those of you that live in this area that know that, and I insulted you, I am sorry. Um, so far this trip has been wimpy, 
gloomy and not very spring break like. And hopefully the wind noise isn't too terrible. But uh, the scenery is actually starting to get kind of good. Um, Santa Fe is turning into, or I should say New Mexico is turning into a uh, pretty state. So we're going to be sitting here for a little while and then we're going to go to uh, Santa Rosa. We're pretty much hitting every supercharger along the way because our efficiency has been so bad due to this wind and uh, the extra weight that I have with uh, people and luggage. So um, we're going to sit around here for a while and then we're going to... Uh, is going to be the Santa Rosa supercharger and it says that now turn left onto South Adams Street get there with 36% charge which is plenty we're gonna unplug and get going Santa Rosa, New Mexico. This lake was 56.6 miles, really windy, 432 watt hours per mile. We're gonna get charged up. All right, we're here in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Um, it uh, The supercharger is Back over there, there's uh, my red Model Y next to a white Model 3 that I saw also back in um, back in Texas. So I tried something new this route because the wind is so bad and uh, I turned off the auto lane change and had it be something that I'd have to do myself and I'm trying to figure out if I like it better or not. It definitely gives me a better sense of control. I'm trying to see if it makes my wife less tense when I drive. Um, haven't quite figured that out yet. So we're going to sit here for a little bit because the wind has been horrendous. Our efficiency has been terrible. And we are going to then get all charged up uh, so we can make it to our final destination in Santa Fe, which will be almost the halfway point of our trip. At least it will be the furthest point we are away from home in Iowa. We'll spend a few days down there tooling around before heading up to uh, Boulder to see my son at the University of Colorado. So um, let's see what happens on the next leg. All right, we're about ready to head out on the last leg of our journey from where we are here in Santa Rosa, New Mexico, up to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, given the headwinds, it says that we're going to get there with a 29% charge. I don't believe it. I think it's going to be closer to 20% charge, which will give us a little bit of free space to tool around in town, what we need to do before we settle in for the night at the end of day three. So I'm going to unplug and we're going to get going. <laughs> We made it to Santa Fe and the first half going west into the headwind was brutal. Um, we had efficiencies upwards in the 450, 500, 500 plus 
Um, but once we turned north, uh, we had snow, uh, but then the numbers came down. You can see that we got 111 miles at 394, but here's the last 30 averaging 305. So um, much better on the tail end of this trip. So we're gonna pick up the keys to our place we're staying at and make our way to our destination. All right, that's the end of the day. As always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and that like button, it really helps drive the channel. And also if you're looking to get a thousand free supercharger miles on your purchase of a Tesla, don't miss out on using referral code. If you wanna use my referral code, that would be awesome. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Thank you.